This video is to help you get a better understanding of how the eDrum and Transient Scan controls work. After watching this video, you should be able to adjust them with confidence. The Gain, Thresh, Scan, Hold, and Decay make up the basic controls you need to adjust to get fast and accurate performance without double triggering. Before I talk about these controls, I want to talk about how the UI is scaled. The Y axis, Signal Strength, is scaled exponentially to give more detail at the lower intensities. When we look at the noise floor in the scrolling view, it appears that there's a lot of noise. But because of this exponential scaling, this noise only represents about 1% of the input's range. Similarly, the x-axis, which represents time in milliseconds, is also scaled exponentially to give more detail near the start of the transient. To put that into perspective, one centimeter at the start of the transient represents about one millisecond of time, but one centimeter at the end of the transient represents over 100 milliseconds. All right, let's start by talking about the thresh control. You want to keep it just above the noise floor. Setting it too low will cause the input to start triggering on noise. And setting it too high will make it hard to trigger soft hits. Next, we'll adjust the gain. When you hit your pad slightly off center, you want your hardest hits to barely clip the input. Use the clip indicators in the VU meter to see when your hits are maxing out. If your gain is set to 1 and the input is still clipping, then you are going to run into performance issues and you'll need to mechanically adjust your setup to reduce the signal strength. Next, we'll take a look at the scan time control. Generally speaking, you want to keep the scan time as short as possible. This is because a MIDI note isn't generated until after the scan phase. The longer this phase takes, the longer we have to wait before we hear a sound. The minimum scan time is 2 milliseconds, but positional sensing, bell sense, and hotspot suppression require at least 2.3 milliseconds of time. And if you set the scan time too short, they will be disabled or not function optimally. With that in mind, we need to scan enough of the transient to get a good and consistent representation of the intensity of the hit. We don't necessarily need to scan the highest peaks. For example, here the highest peak arrives around 10 milliseconds, but I certainly don't want to wait 10 milliseconds before a MIDI note is generated. This leads us to the hold control. While the scan control doesn't need to cover the highest peaks, the hold control does. If we reduce the hold control and then hit the pad again, we'll get a double trigger because late arriving peaks re-trigger the scanning process again. If you look in the scrolling view, you'll actually see the double hits. Do not set the hold control too far past the maximum peaks. Setting the hold control too long will prevent you from performing flams and reduce the ability to track drum rolls and buzz rolls. You can see here that we missed this transient, which would have been caught if our hold time was set properly. The last control is the decay control. This control should loosely follow the natural decay of your hits. If you try to set it too aggressively, you will get double triggering. Again, you can tell that there's double triggering because we get multiple hits in the scrolling view, and the transient shown is relatively low intensity even though we hit the pad a lot harder. If you set the decay too relaxed, you'll have issues doing rolls and buzz rolls. They'll feel mushy, like you're missing notes, and positional sensing won't work properly. And if you look in the scrolling view, you'll see lots of brown, indicating that the decay is not aggressive enough. 
When your transient scan settings are dialed in, you shouldn't see much brown in the scrolling view. Now that our transients are being accurately tracked, we'll take a quick look at the velocity curve control. A real drum or cymbal's volume is naturally amplified due to resonance. In electric drum design, resonance is minimized to keep things quiet so you don't piss off your neighbors. To make up for this lost amplification, use the velocity curve control. A good starting point for any pad or cymbal is an upward curving parabola.